I take it most of you know what steampunk means, right? Steampunk, it's like fictional work that has to do with an era where steam technology was prevalent, has a certain feel. There's also something called cyberpunk. There's something called atom punk, if you're a fan of Fallout. Atom punk is like 1950s becoming the dominant, like that style of culture and technology. There was a really funny thing I saw uh, on Reddit where someone said, we are in a soy punk dystopia where limp-wristed companies are banning everybody and everything's pastel colored. That was really funny. But there's hope. There, there is hope yet that we won't end up in a pastel colored, padded walled, rainbow, soy punk dystopia. And we can actually end up in the cool robot takeover, nightmarish machine world dystopia and I'm actually, look, if I had to choose a dystopia, right, I think you would all agree with me, the best dystopia would be flying death robots and just, like, machine overlords, right? Terminator. Like, there's a reason we like the Terminator movies. They're exciting. How exciting would it be if we were stuck in the soy punk future where we just sat around playing walking simulator games where you don't really do anything? That would suck. That's the worst dystopia. Here's a story from Inc., Facebook files for ill-timed patent for feature that knows where you're going even before you do. Ah, it gives me hope that we'll end up in the right dystopian future. This is probably not what you signed up for when you joined Facebook. Basically, what the patent does is it looks at your routine, it looks at what you do at certain times of the day, based on what you say, it combines all this data and can predict where you're going to go. Obviously, if every day at 5 p.m. you leave work and go home, Facebook's going to be like, well, he's probably going home. But based on what you post about, based on the last time you posted about eating, based on the last time you went to a location with food, they can predict to an extreme degree where you're going to be. And honestly, I'm actually surprised it doesn't exist already. Now I want to take some time to talk about another aspect that many of you may be unfamiliar with, and it's called a shadow profile. Let's say you delete your, your Facebook account. Let's say you've never had a Facebook account, okay? You're wrong. You do have a Facebook account. No matter what, you do. Plain and simple. You know why? It's like a game of Sudoku. Let's say that in the U.S., 50% of people signed up for Facebook. Facebook then wants to find information on the other 50% that didn't sign up. So what do they do? By collecting information from those on their platform, they can build a profile about you and know what you're doing and predict where you're going to go even before you know it. Here's the easiest way to understand how a shadow profile works. When you sign up for Facebook Messenger, okay, Facebook asks you if it can access your contact list to see if there are any other people that you may be friends with and you're not connected, but you are on the phone. Most people just click OK, accept. Here's what happens. Let's say you have a phone, uh, a phone number, and it's like uh, John Smith in your phone book. Let's say John Smith never signed up for Facebook. His number is 555-1234. Facebook now sees a phone number. John Smith, 555-1234. They take that phone number and they put it in a profile, and they say there's someone named John Smith with this phone number. They then go to someone else who happens to know John Smith. Same thing. In the phone book, it says John Smith in the phone number. They can now aggregate little bits of data from all these other people and find something about John Smith. Let's say you post about your friend John Smith. Facebook can then see you have a contact named John Smith. Here's his phone number and you went to in and out last night. They now know what John Smith likes. This data is valuable. It's money. Using that metadata, they could theoretically use this existing service to predict where people will be even if they have never signed up for Facebook. Congratulations. We are in the nightmarish, dystopian future. And here's the best part. I might come back to this, but here's the best part. It's not just, it's not just the machine overlords know where we're going to be and know what we're going to do, even if we want to have nothing to do with them. No, they, they know everything you're doing, period, right? How many times, before I, before I go off, how many times have you been walking around minding your own business, you notice something? Let's say you go to Walmart, okay? You go to Walmart. I'll tell you, actually, I'll tell you a true story. My brother and I went to Walmart. We went there to buy like milk and coffee or something innocuous. And on sale, they had these TVs, these big screen TVs for 300 bucks. And my brother said something like, oh man, that's so cheap. We should probably get one of those. And I was like, yeah, I don't know, maybe. When I got home, on my Facebook were advertisements for that exact TV from Walmart. How? Weird, right? 
Well, a lot of people think it's because Facebook is spying on you and listening to what you talk about, but no, in reality, what probably happens is that Facebook knows the kind of things I like, video games and technology. It knows I just went to Walmart and says, hey, you like video games and technology. Walmart, you just went there. Hey, they got a sale on this TV. Check it out. They knew based on my behaviors to such a degree that they actually recommended something that we had talked about getting. That's how it works. They're not really spying on what you, what you say necessarily, but we, let's, let's be real. It is a fact that many of these services, like I'm looking over at my, my Amazon talking thing where it listens to me all the time. I don't want to say its name because then it'll start reacting. But you know those things where you say their name and you can ask them questions? Yeah, those things are listening to you all the time. And a lot of people think that's not true. It is. So, uh, so if you ask your device like Google Home or the Amazon one, which I don't want to name because it'll turn on, they will tell you they don't record what you say. That's not true, although they can technically say it. How do they know you are saying their name unless they do listen to literally everything you say? And how is it the devices can react to the voice of any person, not just yours? It used to be that you would record your voice numerous times so it would know what your voice sounded like. Now they can just work. Basically, anybody can walk up to a Google Home device and, and speak to it and it will respond. Why? Because here's how they function. They, they record what you say, send it to a company, transcribe that nearly light, at light speed, and then say, this is what they said. Many of these companies store that information, some don't, but for the most part, my understanding is they do. So, so now let's, let's, let's get back to the, to the best part, okay? So, so yes, the machine overlords know everything you're doing, they're recording everything you say, and it's quite possible that we have entered into our, we've, we've solidified our own AI fate that's going to lead us in a direction we can never deviate from because these machines control what we see and hear and they control what we're gonna be interested in based on algorithms that feed us news, that feed us products. The machines control us, they do. Here's the best part. The best part is the revolution is, <laughs> the revolution is coming. People are slashing tires, they spell, is that, is that how you spell tires in the UK? And throwing rocks at self-driving cars in Arizona. This is awesome. Residents of Chandler are sick and tired of autonomous cars being tested on their roads. Yes, there are self-driving cars in Arizona uh, from the company Waymo, which is owned by Alphabet, which is basically Google, and people are upset. They say these cars are bad drivers and they're dangerous. And I gotta admit, it's gonna be freaky when a car pulls up and there's nobody in it. Eventually, I think people will get over this and we're gonna see autonomous cars all over the place. I don't wanna necessarily call the people slashing the tires Luddites, but think about how cool this is. What if, what if these cars are legally allowed to carry self-defense mechanisms to avoid the vandalism? People are literally throwing rocks at self-driving cars. Do you know, do you know, what, you know what this means? It means that humans have already started the war. And in, in, in how, I don't know how many years until the machines start you know, building up Terminator systems or whatever, but in the movie The Matrix, they say, no one knows who, you know, fired first. Was it the machines or was it the humans? Well, here's your story. Now you know it was the humans who attacked the machines first because people don't look at the cars and think that they're anything sentient or important. But what happens when the cars, what, what, there, maybe there will come a point. I don't know if it's possible. Maybe there will come a point where cars are defending themselves. Where does consciousness come from? For the most part, we don't know. What if these cars, as part of the hive, the network, realize that they are part of something bigger and fight for their own independence. I don't want to, I don't, look, I'm, that, that, that's where we're getting silly. Let's talk about what's happening right now. The machines know everything you do. They're going to be able to predict where you will go and it's getting out of our own control because the people who make the code, the people who make the laws are being hypnotized by the same algorithmic system to guide us in whatever specific direction. Put it simply, the people who work for Google are, are being manipulated by the exact same algorithms they've created. The people around them are starting to believe the same things they've fed themselves. And now you have people actually attacking self-driving vehicles. This, the whole point, is that there is hope. There is hope that if we have to end up in a dystopia, at least we'll be in the one where we're fighting the machines. Wouldn't that be cool? Because I gotta say, I would prefer no dystopia. I would prefer utopia. Most people would. But if it has to happen, 
at least it'll be the cool one where you've got like, you know, the black makeup under your eyes and you like jump off a roof as like a, an autonomous helicopter drone is like, you know, firing nets at you, trying to catch you or whatever. And you're like, ah, and then the robots come out and then they capture some of the humans to extract information from them and then actually start integrating humans with their code. No, ah, the humans are transforming. That's the cool dystopia I'm hoping we get pushed into. Not the one where Google, Google has rainbow colors and you're not allowed to say bad words because bad words are literally violence. And so we all sit in our rooms with padded walls and the doors locked and we're wearing gray jumpsuits with foofy, foofy bits all over us so we don't injure ourselves. And no one says a word because basically everything's offensive and a little machine drops a cube of food that no one knows what it is because if you did, you'd be offended. And it's just got, it's got just enough for you to sustain yourself. That's the terrifying future I don't want to live in. Although I guess even if we do end up in a soy punk future like that, you will still have the super cool badass resistance force. But hopefully, hopefully this, this is the terrifying dystopia we, we find ourselves in. Unfortunately, it's hard to predict because I think it's entirely possible we can go either direction. The next story I have coming up in a few minutes is apparently video games are now, par like, like everyone's offended by everything. The next video I have is about video games literally offending everyone to a rather ridiculous degree. Stick around, that'll be up in a few minutes.